Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the currency war that is uh, taking effect in the um, forex market, the foreign exchange market and really how to kind of navigate through um, potentially um, this uh, this really kind of uncertain time. And um, a bit of fundamentals here, in fact, a lot of fundamentals as fundamentals and risk sentiment is really what drives uh, price. So if you understand this, um, you'll be best placed to, again, try to navigate your way through um, this, this crisis. So um, the currency war, what is a currency war? Well, um, the currency war has been brought on by central banks and the central banks um, are trying to protect the economy uh, via um, hiking, holding or cutting interest rates or um, uh, something called quantitative easing or central bank intervention. And all it is is really is um, they're trying to protect the uh, they're implementing measures to protect GDP. So as we know, currencies are traded in what pairs. Yeah. So. The way that you need to think about um, uh, currency trading is strength versus weakness. Who's the strongest one and who's the weakest one out of the two? So if you're trading the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, you want to find out why the Australian dollar is strong and why the um, US dollar is weak or vice versa. And then that creates what? Trends that, that will create, you know, if, the, if, if you're trading the Aussie dollar and the Australian dollar is the stronger out of the two, yeah, then you get uptrends. If the dollar is stronger out of the two and you get downtrends yeah or you should get something like that and if they're both of equal measure then you should get what a ranging market at some point now what determines strength versus weakness is uh three things you've got inflation yeah you've got interest rates and you've got um gdp So the better interest rates are and GDP is in inflation, as long as it gets a 2% target, and when it comes to inflation, the better uh, the economy is is doing. And the more uh, of, uh, closer to a recession, you know, um, a country is, is the worse that it's doing it, interest rates and, and inflation, right? And I have a course that explains all of this free, absolutely free. The link is in the description box below. Watch that and then come back here if you don't understand what I'm saying. But if you do, continue watching. So um, what's happening is, is that the coronavirus, right, is causing um, a global slowdown. So um, what central banks are trying to do is cut interest rates. Now, why are they cutting interest rates or potentially introducing, um, you know, thing, measures like QE, right negative interest rates um, and central bank intervention and it's because um, the cheaper your currency yeah it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for the economy in fact the cheap currency is actually very good for the for the uh, for can be good for an economy because um, of exports yeah think of imports and exports right as what you sell right all of these all of these are shops yeah the dollar is a shop the uh, Aussie Australian dollar is is, is 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 a business, right? And you, as a business, um, you want to sell, you know, goods, goods and services, right? So, the more goods you can sell with a with a with a cheaper um, uh, export, yeah, the better. So, if you've got two countries competing, selling the same product, right? It's the reason why China, right? Everyone goes to China to produce and manufacture their goods because they can they can. Uh, you, you can produce the same, you know, uh, a, a phone or, or piece of clothing in China for pretty much pennies. And if you was to do that in the US, for example, or, or England or in the UK, it would cost you a lot more. So the, the point is, is to manufacture it in China and sell it, you know, to the rest of the world because China have a cheap exchange rate. Yeah. Compared to, um, you know, every every other currency. Yeah, so a cheap currency isn't bad for an economy if, as long as you have obviously something of value to sell. Yeah, the exchange rate um, is good. It's the reason why um, one of the reasons why the UK never went into a recession after um, uh, 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 Brexit in 2016 or the announcement of Brexit. Yes, the pound plunged, but what that did was is that that boosted exports because um, 
it was it made uh, um, uh, uh, British exports cheaper, so they could sell the same goods for cheaper. Therefore, people were buying more. To think about it, if you know you would go were to go into Louis Vuitton, for example, or Balenciaga, right? And then they had um, you could buy that uh, the, those clothes or whatever you know it could be Apple, whatever it is for a, an absolute cheaper price you they probably end up selling a lot more because the same quality of clothes and same quali quality of uh, of goods but um you know you could uh, you could you could buy more of that so that's basically what exports are right or what, what interest rates can do to the economy what also interest rates do um, with, with an economy is that they allow businesses to borrow for cheaper yeah, so they can invest into uh, um, uh, into trying to um, to uh, for growth. Yeah, so rather than bo borrowing at, for example, you know, one point seven five percent, which was what it was previously, yeah, in in the United States, yeah, the Fed cut rates to one point two five. Yeah, and that has a knock on effect with businesses. That has a knock on effect with mortgages. People have more money in their pockets to uh to spend money because their mortgages are less uh businesses can borrow more you know borrow for, for cheaper therefore invest will reinvest in you know um in 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 their company um in times of trouble so what's happening you know regarding um uh you know the the, the currency war due to the due, due to the global slowdown so globally we know that the coronavirus is spreading right and so the first central bank to cut was the um, Australian central bank, right? And they cut um, rates to a record low of 0.5% yeah, on coronavirus concerns. So they cut, yeah, and they're currently at 0.5%. Um, then it was over to the US, yeah, to, 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 uh, to see what they would do. Remember, because it's affecting everybody. The coronavirus is affecting everyone. So um, the Federal Reserve announced its first emergency rate cut since the financial crisis. Yeah. So again, keep in mind that every country is trying to protect what? Their GDP. Yeah. By lowering interest rates. Yeah. Therefore, they're trying to protect their Tens GDP. Oh. Ultra quilted, and he's gone to Sorry about that. So that's the effect of um, of cutting interest rates to now 1.25%. And then the Bank of Canada did exactly the same thing. The Bank of England today decided that they wanted to do emergency cuts. Yeah, um, They slashed rates by 50 basis points, surprising the market. Yeah, so the Bank of England are now at 0 0.25. Now the problem with the euro is that they are already at zero. Yeah, so they got other measures to do. They can either cut into negative interest rates or announce more quantitative easing. Japan are even worse. They are at zero minus 0 0.1 percent, and they're already quantitative easing. Uh, Swiss franc, I think, are at minus. I think it's minus one percent. I think it is. And so on and so forth. For the, the, the New Zealand dollar isn't that bad. I think they're at one percent at the moment. Yeah. So what does this mean? So what does this mean overall? Let me get to the point. The point is, is that interest rates, yeah, and the fact that they're cutting, uh, all central banks are cutting interest rates, is who is going to be best to weather the storm? Yeah. Who is going to be best to weather the storm? Who's in? The, you know, as once was told to me. You know, you've, you, it's the dog with the least fleas at the end of the day. Yeah, who is going to be the which country is going to survive or be least affected by it by the by the coronavirus slowdown? Right, Europe are already in recession territory. Japan are, are in recession territory as well. Yeah, the Bank of England and in the UK are also there. Best placed at the moment are the US dollar. Right, or the US economy at the moment because their GDP is a lot higher than the rest of these guys. Yeah, so who's going to reach recession first? And recessions normally last for an average of they say two years, right? Just an average. So it's not really about interest rates, right? Because you know, the Bank of Canada, when they cut interest rates, if you go to the Financial Times, 
what it says here is that central banks and finance authorities across the globe, globe have vowed to enact stimulus measures as needed with the spread of the virus causing angst among, amongst investors. Yeah, So there is a coordinated effort. There's a coordinated effort amongst the central banks to protect their economies. Now, none of us know what these measures are going to do to, you know, or do for the, the, the economies of the, these particular currencies. The hope is, is that obviously interest rate cuts or quantitative easing or even um, the, the, the dreaded um, central bank intervention, you know, Japanese yen, Bank of Japan or currency intervention alert as volatility surges, yeah, um, is, is going to have for the economy. But what the, um, what they, what we're looking for ultimately, yeah, is the, uh, what we should be looking at in the, uh, in this, in these times is GDP. That's where, in my opinion, of course, it's my opinion, that's where the focus is going to be. Yeah. Inflation is probably going to be taking a back seat for now. Interest rates, everybody's cutting. Yeah, everybody's cutting rates, doing emergency cuts now. The Bank of Canada did an emergency cut. The Bank of England today did an emergency cut. It's over to Europe now tomorrow to see what they, they're going to do and how they're going to react to everyone else. And then over to Japan and then over to um, the Swiss franc and then or Switzerland and Swiss National Bank and then over to New Zealand and then it's going to be back over to the Australian dollar depending on what um, uh, the, the, their GDP numbers come out so if if Australia then their GDP comes out and it's as expected or you know it's it's weather in the storm you can probably expect that the, the Australian dollar to start to rally if the US you know GDP figures come out and they are terrible yeah, what happens is that puts pressure on, you know, the, the Federal Reserve to cut more rates or to, you know, to to do, you know, maybe some sort of fiscal stimulus. Yeah. And then that will be, you know, uh, what should happen typically. And this is a game of probabilities is that the dollar should, um, you know, sink. If you're not going to say sink, but, you know, the value of the dollar will probably end up going lower. But it all depends on GDP. Now, this is what is in focus everything else as far as inflation and even interest rates are in focus to a certain degree and uh, quantitative easing obviously the measure that the uh, european central bank and uh, the, the 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 bank of japan and the swiss national bank are going to do is obviously in focus but it's all about how that affects gdp and the more uh, you know closer to a recession or if if you know the first into a recession right those that is the currency um you should maybe be selling again this isn't financial advice um i can't offer, offer financial advice but this is how fundamentals and risk sentiment work and just for before i go as well um japan are actually in probably japan and europe are probably the two in the worst situations and probably the swiss franc at the moment and the bank of England and and the uk as well so those four i would probably say in the uh, in, in in the worst situations out of you know the eight, and again that's just my opinion, not financial advice, but um, economically uh, looking at the data, these these are basically the uh, the currencies I would be I'm personally looking to uh, sell in a risk on environment. Obviously the, Jap the Japanese yen and Swiss franc appreciate in value, which is problematic. So um, again, there's a special caution with with these two, All right? But these two. are the ones I would be looking to potentially get short on. Anyways, um, again, not financial advice. I have to reiterate that. Um, most of you will end up, uh, you know, losing your money in the Forex markets. I have to say that as a disclaimer. So um, uh, just, but this is for educational purposes only, yeah? Um, some more advice is just manage your risk try to trade at, at the smallest risk you can 0.1 0.2% or however small your account you know um, can manage yeah your aim is to stay in the game right for as long as possible manage your risk let the profits take care of themselves go for more than what you risk 
and um, eventually you should be okay. Anyways, guys, take care and I'll speak to you soon. So if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone for X strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.